Hi, everybody. We are live. Welcome to the market update part two. Due to technical difficulties, the stream dropped off. So if you're out there, I'm going to give everybody uh, or anybody <laughs> a couple of minutes to come back in and then I'll continue with the market update. So if you missed out on the first part and you're just joining now, let's go over one of the things that we were thinking. Something's going on in the fiat currency market. There's a problem with the yen. And we've done some math that says the problem, a problem with the yen could be a problem with stocks. Okay. And if there's a problem with stocks, then risky assets could be in trouble. So I want you to take risk management seriously. So as, as I did that, we're welcoming in Supreme Crypto, right? I know that was scary. We lost the whole stream. We're sorry. Lawn Shark is back. Okay. So the stream dropped and now we're effectively doing market update part two, right? And then we'll piece it all together later. So if you're just tuning in now or you missed the first part, I'm sure it will all be there for the recorded video. Okay. Crypto Lion says we are here for support. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you. Right. Mr. Emmanuel reminding everybody that despite the technical difficulties with the importance of the content, please hit the like button. And then Lawn Shark says, of course, I missed the first half. Don't worry. Right. What we did was we covered that there's a problem in the fiat currency market with the Japanese currency. And this could affect stocks. So if you're noticing crypto is nervous, okay, okay. If you're noticing the crypto market is nervous, that's why. Now, how do we know, how do we know whether or not it's time to worry or not worry? Because sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. Like crypto literally has had a mind of its own this year. So this is how we're going to do it. I'm looking at the 90 minute chart of Bitcoin, right? And there's a 13 top. Hi, Marco. Welcome back. There's a 13 top. Okay. And it was at 42K. So it was kind of almost a per perfect 13 top because, you know, it topped and then you had FOMO up to like, you know, I don't know, 42, 42,100. Now, why is 42,000 something important in Bitcoin? Well, because... If you look at the stuff our quant guys did, they had resistance at 42,600. So follow me here, people. Okay. 42,000 was resistance in DeMarc. 42,600 was resistance from token metrics quant. If that level creates a down move and you turn around and Bitcoin starts taking out 40K again, then you probably have confirmation that a material top has been put in. So I don't want you to freak out, but I don't want you to sit on your ass either. All right. I've been politely saying, hey, use green days to adjust positions. Okay. Now I think you need to start adjusting positions now. You need to say to yourself, if there's a wipeout in stocks or a blowout in legacy, do I want to watch my portfolio get hurt? Okay. This is the four hour chart of ETH. Now I've always been talking about the failed rally, right? So ETH goes up, it makes the nine top, and then it turns around and goes down. Now on my Twitter, I had 3140 to 3180, okay, as GAN resistance zones. And as it turned out, that's where you got that nine top, right? That FOMO up move, and then back down again. So is there a new trend higher or is it the top of a range? It feels like the top of a range. If you go to what the token metrics quant department has, they had on the right-hand side, they had 3180. So again, multiple different disciplines had resistance in an area. Okay. And then the market turned around and went lower. Okay. For avalanche, you had resistance at 82. So it hit 82 and this started selling. Lo and behold, again, the quant team had resistance at 82. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that if you look at these resistance points and if you take them out on the upside, okay, everything's fine. Okay. But if this market 
doesn't recover above those points, okay, the market is susceptible to a move in equities. Because the move in the yen, although it might be over, right, is a signal that something is wrong. Somebody is moving money out of a big currency like the yen, and they're, and they're hiding in the dollar. All right. Now let's take a look at near. So our fundamental guys really think this can go up. It's reach resistance or it did get to resistance at 17 and a half. It backed off a little bit. It got down to like 1675 this morning and we're going to see what happens. All right. Now let's go to step in. So this token right? Connected to this NFT work out to earn play where people who got in early, early, okay. With like the, you know, uncommon sneaker NFTs, all right. Are, are just printing money working out every day because this token that they earn has been first, it mooned up to two and now it mooned, it went to three, 380, 375. VCs have got seven or 800% returns in this. I'm showing resistance at 380. Now, yesterday I talked about 470 as a possible moonshot target. Now I'm starting to wonder, based on some of this other work, I was actually able to draw resistance at 380 and it's been up there twice and hasn't been able to get through. So if you're in this or, or you're watching this later, I mean, token metrics as a company for our, for our premium group was all over this trade, all over it. Token unlocks are coming soon and VCs have got huge profits. So we think not investment advice, there's more money to be made owning the sneakers and working out versus speculating in the sneakers or speculating in the token. Okay, the token seems to have an enormous valuation. So if you're going to do step in from here on out, get a sneaker and work out, not investment advice. This feels overdone, a little bit dangerous that as the macro environment is turning, right, they're doing crazy FOMO in some of the more speculative parts of the market, right? Okay. Now, ApeCoin, God, this thing, no. This is the testimony to what can happen to technical analysts in a range, right? First, you know, it's at 13 or 14, and it looks like it's going up. And then it dumps to not, uh, to 10 or 11, and they're like, eh, maybe you're going to get to buy it at nine. And of course, what does it do? It turn around and it gaps to 17. Now, I have 1650 as resistance. So if ApeCoin cannot get through 1650, right? ApeCoin and Stepin together, right? They represent the high quality speculative components of crypto, in my opinion, right? This is like the top line stuff, right? Where it comes to like speculation. Now, if these two things cannot get through resistance, we'll see tomorrow. They cannot get through resistance and Bitcoin and Ethereum are still kind of in the red, make position adjustments. Like don't wait, right? The, the green move was the move from 39 to 42. That was the green move if we're talking about Bitcoin. Okay. And if this thing just handed you a ton of profits, I say, take the profits. Now, if ApeCoin goes to 30, I will look like a moron but I will be able to turn myself around because if it is going to go up, it's going to break through 16.5 and then come back and retest it. Okay. So I'm all about taking the money in some of these trades. Now let's look at ref finance. Somebody was asking in the chat, how high can near go? Like our fundamental guys think that near can go like much higher, like much higher, you know, and we've seen, we've seen, one coin markets before we've seen the market slump or range with one coin taking off. Now this ref finance is one of the examples. This is like, you know, a DeFi play inside the near ecosystem. So this is probably overdone. Okay. 
with support around $3. So if there is a correction, all right, you want to see if, if ref holds $3. Okay. Now here is another word on near circling back. Okay. <laughs> Jerry's like, this is the last time I tell bill about the dollar index. I understand, right? If the dollar index tops at a hundred, that's good for crypto. That's good. But I, I'm wondering why the dollar index got to 100 to begin with. In other words, what was everybody doing? They were running out of their other currency and into the dollar. Why? Right? In other words, the move has been reflected in currencies. So the dollar index may not freak out Bitcoin, but then you may find out why everybody was moving into the dollar. That's my point. And I don't want you all to get killed. Now with near near is in this like very tight range between 1570 and 1760. Our guys think that, you know, because it's winding up, winding up, winding up that near could actually pop out, take out 1760 and make a new high. So near is at resistance, but it's not backing off. So go back to what I was saying earlier about Bitcoin. And Ethereum, when we were doing, you know, the first part of the stream, you want to look to see, okay, did we make a short-term top? And did that short-term top last one day, two days, three days? If it lasts one or two days, who cares? It's not a top. It's just a temporary, right? Temporary local peak, right? With the trend resuming or with the market going sideways. But if you see a short-term top, a failed rally, and then that last, that top doesn't get exceeded for one, two, three, four days. Then you got to start making adjustments. All right. That is the market update. That's the first part of the market update. Now I want to go to something else. Okay. So I said NFTs at the end. We're going to do it now. Let me ask you something. What does a 52 year old YouTuber want for Christmas? You know what I want for Christmas? I want a cool cartoon avatar like Notorious Bill, right? So instead of Notorious Bill being a picture, right? I would love it and we're working, I'm working on this. I'm making Notorious Bill into like an avatar where you could dial in and look at me, or you could look at Notorious Bill. Now this, as I understand it, is a, is a Twitter page. It's not investment advice. It's a Twitter page of an NFT that as I understand it, the NFT will act as an avatar, read your face. So if you wanted to be on Zoom as a cartoon character, that's the utility of the NFT. Okay, now I have to leave the rest of this to our NFT scoring team, right? But these, this NFT scoring team is the group that found Azuki. So that's just a simple fact, right? It's the same analysts that found Azuki when it was at 3 ETH. Okay, so this thing actually mints tomorrow. If you want the details, you got to subscribe to Token Metrics, but... I just followed these guys on Twitter and I got to leave it at that. Okay. Let's go to bottom up analysis. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to blow this up on the screen. Okay. So that's better. Okay. What is this? This is a new spreadsheet where we're going through the token metrics website looking for altcoins. Okay. So here's the theory. We do macro that's top down. That's not exactly bullish, but if that's wrong, then it never hurts to, to hunt for small altcoins. Even if the market is in a range, there are some coins that can just absolutely move, right? Synthetic mooned yesterday. Today it was ape coin. Okay. Some of the ones that we're looking at, TCT Token Club, right? The grade went up 62%, likely because the price went up 46%.
One that I just think is interesting just by the grade, we search for grades that go up. So the grade went up 32% for OXN, but the price only went up 7%. So when I click this, it takes me to token metrics. It's kind of a nifty little spreadsheet. And then I can take a look and see what's going on in OXN. So the grade jumped, but price didn't. So yes, price recently went from 40 to 90. And there's been a lot of volume. Okay. So let's go to our diagonal indicator because I can do trading view on token metrics. And it looks like there's a big battle on this diagonal line which is around 60 cents. So very simply, if this is above 60 cents, keep an eye on it, put it in your watch list, right? This is like this idea that we're building. You know, if every day on the stream, I give you one to three altcoins, you could have this huge list on trading view, right? Eventually that you can check regularly on token metrics, right? So there's the spike in the grade going up to 87. Now, why are we doing this? Well, because with things like Zillica, we noticed that the grade mooned, the grade went to 90 before price moon. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but we are actively tracking that. So we're tracking this though. We're tracking TCT. Okay. We're tracking ACE. Okay. OXEN. And then what we're also doing, okay. After I show it to you, right? We're tracking to see how price performs. So remember this yesterday, remember DEUS? And I said, wow, you know, who's going to buy this because it's gone up a lot. Well, it, it's up, it went up 13%, <laughs> right? Let's just go to the chart of that. So I can show you what this looks like. Now, if you're out there wondering, it's like, Bill, what are you doing? This is the new altcoin overtime, except it's being done from a spreadsheet that links to what token metrics is saying about these altcoins. Okay. So I was like, all right, well, the grade on this went up and do you want to get involved? Are, are, are you brave enough? So 704 is an important technical level. So I think it's got to get above 704 to get excited about it. But it is interesting that it did hold the 62% retracement at 447. Okay. So, you know, as, as we like to calculate these things, we find the token metrics grade here, and then we're tracking the price over here after we locate it. So as you can see, two of them have already gone down and this could be interesting, right? In other words, what happens if an AI system identifies a bunch of altcoins? says they're okay, but they go down. What's that tell you? It tells you there's something wrong with the market. So either way, right? You get small coins that can moon, or at least that you can watch because you got to do your own research on this. Like if you go back over here, okay, our guys are telling you, right? What each of these coins are, right? Like Oxen is a privacy coin that uses a secure messaging platform, okay? Right. And then, you know, they have what the nodes do and they have a ton of information and we present this to our private group. So I'm not going to kill you all with it. What I am going to do is give you the symbols so that you can watch them because we'll watch them together. Okay. But there's going to be some D Y O R on this type of stuff. All right. Now let's go. Taz, welcome. Um, you didn't miss everything. So let's recap for Taz and everyone else. There are some weird, there are weird movements in the foreign exchange market. The dollar index is at hundred. It may not go through hundred, but the things that got it to hundred may indicate a problem in the legacy system. And I'm not in the mood to stick around. So if crypto does not go back up in like two days, okay, I'm inclined to say, let's go to, let's get some stable coins going, right? Let's not mess around. That, that's the, that's the executive summary. Now let's go to the DeMarc work in Ethereum. And then I will get some questions answered. All the questions answered. Okay. So if ETH goes up, 
it goes to the top of the range, right? And then there's a rally and then it fails. And then I've been saying for a while, you're tired of it. Watch out for failed rallies. Okay. Sell in May and go away. Yes. And bless our friends in the Ukraine. May they fight on. Right. Okay. Um, so let's go to synthetics. Okay, let's go to let's go to synthetics and find out what's going on there. And I'm getting ready to take all this down to a 30 minute chart and believe it or not on the trading battle, I'm sorry, a 90 minute chart and believe it or not on the trading battle last night, I actually took it down right to like 15 minute charts. So here's synthetics, right? There's the 13 top on the 90 minute chart. There's some pretty insane FOMO. Okay, through a resistance line that's at 670. So I think synthetics, in order to invalidate the fact that it could be a top, would have to get back above 670. There's a five wave signal up here. So I, I would say with synthetics that if you caught this move, way to go. But uh, I would seriously contemplate taking the money if it was a trading play. Right now, if you've been holding this forever, okay, which is a polite way of saying if, if you were, you know, if you were holding a bag, every time this thing goes up to seven, it gets rejected. So last time it went to seven and it went above it and then they slammed it down and that sucked. And now they're doing it again where they rammed it up to 718. Now, I think if synthetics takes out seven, that that's a sign that the whole DeFi space could ignite. But what, but again, what, what was I saying? Watch out for the failed rally. Okay. All right. So let's look at Ave. Okay, so here's the DeMarc resistance point in Ave is 195. And I'm not the only one who sees it. Now, again, they rush up, they take profits. And, you know, this is the reverse of yesterday. How do you know if it's a failed rally or not? Well, you'll know if they're willing to sell at lower prices. You know, right now, it may be just chuck. And I can, I can acknowledge that, right? I'm trying to assign meaning. And there is no meaning. Like the market is just, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's like, you know, if you look at a 15 minute chart, like let's just pull up a 15 minute chart of Ave for laughs, right? If you pull up a 15 minute chart, this market is really volatile in a confined space. I mean, a 179, 195 range, when the market has been kind of boring and range bound, that, that's really volatile. So crypto has been volatile in a confined space. Maybe it means nothing, but maybe it, you know, it's telling you that the market is like winding itself up. Okay. Somebody's saying Jasmine got rejected. Let's take a look at Jasmine. Okay, if you missed it earlier in the stream, one of the things that I want to do is I want to see if short-term extremes wind up holding for the long term. So if you get like a 13 top or, or you get something like that, okay, I'm having more computer problems today. All right, here we go. Here comes Jasmine. All right, so Jasmine. This is daily. So there's the 13 top. Whoops. No, nope, that's not Jasmine. All right. Here's Jasmine. Sorry. Okay. So Jasmine had resistance at a moving average. Okay. Just above two cents. Okay. Let's see what's going on on like the 90 minute chart. See if I can get that up. 
Okay, so there's your 90 minute chart of Jasmine, right? There's the 13 top, right? Basically at the recent high, they tried it twice and they didn't make it and it got rejected. So let's go over here and look at Jasmine because I know we got people who are really into this. Actually, the whole world seems to be really into this. Okay. So it's still up on the day. Okay. And let's try it. Let's do some artwork in Jasmine to see if it's actually breaking out and you should be buying the dip or whether, you know, that was kind of it. Okay, so I don't see any immediate signs of concern other than the fact that Jasmine unwound its recent decline. Now, could this be a U-shaped bottom? Could this be a teacup and handle? Maybe. Okay, obviously a speculative coin like this is going to need additional help from the market. But clearly when this thing went up to 27 cents, people were selling it. It's as simple as that, right? People who were holding it and didn't want to hold it anymore, like bag holders exited. So I think if you're long this and you want to stay long it, you've either got to sit here and tolerate a range like this, okay? Or you got to wait for a breakout above 27, a return move and then go. Okay, e EOS. Okay, so you got a very, a very robust pump in EOS today. Now, if I look at the D wave, okay, this is the 90 minute chart. So this up move may not be done, but I'm noticing, I'm looking at it. It's probably hard to see, but I see one, two, th three, and they're calling this, the D wave is calling this the fifth wave. So you have to be a little bit careful, right? Especially like, you know, I know there's a lot of people holding bags in this. So yes, it did come back, right? Like this is impressive in a way, but this resistance at 294. So there's, there's people selling it in front of three. So it would be glorious, no doubt for EOS holders. Because I remember multi-coin capital in Austin, like this was one of their first big investments. Wouldn't it be interesting if this was the bigger the base, the higher in the space? Okay, but it's got to take out three because three was a prior low. And every time it gets anywhere near above three, people sell it. So now there may be three more updates here. Okay. And it, it is ironic that sometimes these coins that everyone forgets about, they do well. So if you get three more updates here and it takes out three, you're in business. And if it doesn't, it's business as usual. Any thoughts on Uniswap? Okay, AVAX are near for the next three weeks. Near, not investment advice. Just off what our fundamental guys are saying. And AVAX has not been able to get through 82. Okay, so, you know, Uni woke up one day and they were targeted by the SEC. So like I was saying earlier, the failed rally, right? The curse. There's the 13 top on the 90 minute chart and boom, everybody's selling. Scary, seriously, right? If that, if that little local top winds up the top, right? So if, if, if this goes back up again, cool, cool, right? But you know, failed rallies, bad.
dead. Okay, let's look at API 3. Noticing a pattern here. There's the 13 top, there's the nine top. There's the resistance at 527. It goes up there and then this candle shows everyone selling. So the big question is, can API three get back above 527? Is the short term top the top? If not, cool, right? I know you long this, I know you want it to go up, okay? The moving average is at 532. A DeMarc moving average is there. So, you know, that moving average over here back in, you know, there was a break of that. And that's what started this sort of dead range. So in order to get out of the dead range, API 3's got, got to get back above 532. Okay, Solana, I have right here on a four-hour chart. So what to do with Solana? Well, our AI guys had 105 as a key level. So the good news is Solana is holding support. So it's a small prior high. The bad news is I don't like failed rallies. Okay, let's try to like zoom out, maybe do some fib work on this. Because you've got this god awful decline here. Okay, so for Solana, it's got to stay above 106. I think our fundamental guys had 106 as a key level. So if Solana's above 106, okay. If Solana fails later in the day, not okay. So speaking of failure, let's just do a market check. So I don't like rambling knowing the market is going all over the place or against what I'm saying. So there's ETH sitting on, you know, 3,058. So that was a key level we talked about yesterday. So we talked about resistance and now we're going to see if support around 3K winds up holding, right? Stocks. Okay, we're looking at the 89 minute chart of stocks and then we'll go back to requests. So what this is, this is also another new feature. This is like the mini market update, the update of the update. So we're still inside this box in stocks where we're deciding whether or not big players are using, you know, FOMO buyers to sell. We'll see, right? Kind of hope for the sake of crypto, this is not a trap. This is not a trap. Okay, I did not do TA on ACE. Okay, I don't have that here. Okay, so this is an example of what can happen in altcoins, right? It's huge volatility inside of a range. Now, Obviously, it's down 14%, so it's easy to not like something down 14%, okay? What, what I don't like is you see this big green candle? Whoops. I don't like the double spike formation in small coins, right? So there's a big green candle, goes down. Big green candle, goes down. Okay, you got to be careful of double spikes because that can be a sign of people just getting out. Right? No, is I'm sure there's a fundamental reason why this coin is a good project. Now, if you flip this around, okay, the market has not been able to spend a lot of time below 0.027. So it was down here for a while, but it held. So 
It's also possible that this is like some sort of teacup and handle bottoming formation. And you have to decide which you think it is. Okay. I, I, would, I would be somewhat concerned about the double spike because that, that has never turned out good, but, you know, it's, it's, it hasn't gone through support. So if you've been suffering with this, there's no point in getting out unless it takes out support. That would be my conclusion. Okay, someone says they're in Luna, Ape, and Steppen, and that's been working out, right? More evidence that there really is always a bull market somewhere. Now, one of the things I should have known with Luna is the reason that this thing was mooning so hard was because people want that 20% stable coin yield, right? In other words, people want to be in that ecosystem, and I get that after seeing the yen chart. Or something going on in legacy. Okay. Um, Luna has got resistance at 97. So I'm not really interested in, in buying Luna in front of resistance. Although I get why it, they mooned it because they just, they, they want to be in that ecosystem for that stable coin yield. So if you look at the 90 minute chart, right, there's a 13 top. Okay. Right here. And then it hits the, resistance from the 13th top at 97 and comes off. So will this be a permanent top or, a t or just a, a pause? Okay. And we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that works again. You know, if you made money, pay yourself. I saw a tweet yesterday from Wendy O, right? So, you no. Know, I met Wendy O at NFT LA and you say what you want, but you know, she's got 200,000 something Twitter followers. You know what she said? I saw a tweet that says the only crypto you should hold long-term are moon bags. Meaning, you know, something goes up, you take the money and you leave the rest as a moon bag. Pretty interesting comment from somebody who's plugged in in crypto YouTube. Now, maybe that means you fade that and hodl forever. Okay. I think there will be a hodl forever point. I do not think we are there now. Today, Bitcoin bullish or bearish. All right. Let's pull it up and check it out. Okay. Honestly, my answer is bearish. Here's why 13 top gets the resistance at 42 and comes off. What have I been saying for like two weeks? Three, more than that. Your enemy in a, in a sideways or down or worried market is the failed rally. XRP Shillbilly, welcome. I saw you on the trading battle last night late. Appreciate you showing up. Let's see if I have, I have K-R-E-D-O. Q-R-E-D-O. Right. So we may have just witnessed a give up trade. So it looks like everyone gave up, right? This is a small give up trade, not a big one. Like right here. Okay. But all of these small altcoins have got this similar thing that they get to resistance, they get to prior resistance points, and then people start selling. Noticing a pattern here. Same thing with Bitcoin ETH, by the way. Okay. Somebody's saying phantom, bullish, or bearish. Let's look at it. Now, as you know, I have a hard time not liking phantom just because no one else likes it. Now, can I buy any coin or wait? Okay. Not investment advice. Okay. Um, I, I am not really into buying dips after a failed rally. In other words, if the market is like down, 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 that's been the time to buy. It has not been the time to buy when the market goes up, 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 and then the first dip. 
Like sometimes you get lucky on that, but like as you can tell in Phantom, there really was no dip here. Went straight from 106 to 121. Yeah, there was one dip over here. Okay, but once the thing goes 13 top, 121, okay, it did bounce off 116. So the answer to bullish or bearish Phantom is neutral. Like Phantom has just gotten into a neutral zone. Okay. Uh, it might go to 137. It's so hard to be bearish when you've got a 13 and a nine bottom. So not bullish, not bearish, definitely not bearish. Okay. But probably more neutral. It maybe has to sit here and then if DeFi, the concept wakes up, maybe it goes up. So wait another day or two to see if we can get the read on Phantom. Okay, let's try the graph. Okay, so we want to welcome everybody who's joining in for the request part. Okay, so the graph is sitting here. It's got a nine bottom. It tried to go down, but didn't. So this is like stuck, right? This is, there, there are a lot of altcoins that are, are just in neutral, right? In other words, buying strength didn't work because you had the 13 and the nine top on the 90 minute chart, right? So when you buy these big green candles, what happens? You get host. What happens when you sell the big red candle? Oh, uh, you maybe get host, <laughs> right? It, the market is, is so confined that it's tough to get a read. 30, 35.87 is support. I don't like failed rallies. I don't. You got to know where support and resistance is in your coin. If there's a top that has occurred over the last day or two, okay, and that top holds, then this market is in trouble. So again, are we 90 minutes, same thing, 13 top down, right? Big rally here, nice green candle, 13 top failed rally. Don't play around with failed rallies. Am I going to get to buy Cody at 22 cents? I don't know. Let's look at it. All right. So I guess in a worst case scenario for Cody, the 13 top is in very short term. 23 cents is all the way down here. I don't know that you're going to get it at 22. And if you did get it at 22, I don't know if you'd want it because that means the market would be falling apart. The big support in Cody is at 19. I don't know that, I don't know if it can go down there. I, I do know that if the stock market gets wrecked, it's going to go below 19 cents. I do know that. Okay, Zillica. So this has become quite the pain trade, right? That spreadsheet that I showed you that is the new altcoin over time or our new uh, sort of outline for altcoin over time, it's because we don't want to miss another Zillica. So Zillica is taking out an important moving average. So this actually looks kind of the opposite of what everyone else was looking at. So Zillica did the 13 top on the 90 minute chart, but it hasn't moved. That's interesting, right? Everything else, you know, after it went up, so there were buyers in Zillica at the 23% retracement of this move up. And it's never really paid to get in front of Zillica when an uptrend is starting. So let's see if this thing is recovering. Okay, it hit the 62% retracement and bounced. We talked about this yesterday, right? Remember how I was like, well, if it gets above the 62% retracement, it'll probably do better. And that's what's happening. So this actually looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. Should we sell Monero? Well, I can't give investment advice, but let's take a look at Monero. 
I think if Monero is above 250, it's okay. Okay. I mean, it's obviously late in the game. Or at least it is for the first part of this rally. So there's the prior high in Monero and it's holding 250. Now, one of the things that can be really interesting about this is that we can go to token metrics. So all the grades for Monero are still pretty high. So if it's above 250, you can stay with it. Now let's look at the, at the trend indicator. So the trend indicator went bullish and you actually got a trend. This is the first time that Monero, like back here, it went bullish in, in July, right? And the move took you to something like over 300. So I would say that as long as Monero, let's see if Monero is in any of the indices. Notice Kusama is creeping into the indices too. We should probably take a look at that. So Monero is still in the Kraken index. So I would say you can take some profits in Monero. The way I would do it based on what our system thinks is I would move the stop up. And if it closed two days below 250, take the money. Let's look at Kusama. Nobody's, nobody's asked about that. Okay. Yeah. Somebody's saying Monero is overbought. Take your initial investment out. So paying yourself never hurts. So Kusama is up 8% today. Okay. The token metrics grade spiked all the way up to 88. That's not atypical with a big move. Okay. What is interesting about Kusama is that it went bullish back in March and it's been going sideways. So Kusama is interesting. It's interesting. Should you FOMO into Kusama? Let's take a look at trading view. And say, should you FOMO into Kusama? Okay, Kusama held a key support point at 163. But I think people are selling the rally, right? If they're selling the rally in Polkadot, they're probably selling the rally in Kusama, although volume was robust. So this is an example of just me. I, I don't think I would chase this. So let's just look at Kusama here. I know you didn't ask for this, but you know it popped up on token metrics. So I like to see how things look. Okay, so Kusama doesn't really have any resistance on a daily chart until 196. Okay, let's see if there's anything ugly on the 90-minute chart. So, okay, so here's the 13 top. Okay, it goes up, but it's not a failed rally, right? It, it, it corrected, but it wasn't a colossal failure. So if Kusama gets back above 185, Kusama may have legs for whatever reason. Okay, you did not miss Rune. You did miss Nier. Okay, basically we, we're, we're positive on Nier and we think it could take a shot at 20. That's a little bit more fundamental than technical. But if there's going to be a one coin market, essentially the token metrics research team is betting that it's Nier. Okay, Rune. So 90 minute chart, you get the 13 top. Awesome bounce off 720. So we asked, can you buy the big dips in the big trends? Yes. Okay. It goes up and then it starts coming off again. Now, when I look at Rune, uh, I don't have, the D wave doesn't show it, but I'm wondering if this is like one of these sideways corrections where you know, it rallies, but then you get the decent dip, say, back below nine. And if you did, 
you know, that could be the place to come in and buy Rune. Let's go back to 90 minute because I've already. All right. So is this a failed rally? Well, they tried to get it going, right? So it, it kind of is. It kind of is a failed rally, especially it, it, if it can't stay above 833. All right. Okay, I don't I don't have FWT here. I'm not sure what kind of price history I got. Okay, so let's look at the daily chart. Okay, so this has been in a range. And the question is, is this a consolidation to move higher? Okay, or is this a top? So as we like to say, you don't want to see a failed rally. I mean, that's, I, I, I just can't get that out of my head, right? In other words, is the rally in my coin failing? Now, I know that when you guys call in that you like these altcoins and you're probably not going to get out of them and that's okay. Okay. In other words, if you held on in this, you went from 0.014 to 0.019. The question is, like I said, headed into May, do you want to hold stuff that you don't believe in? If you believe in this, it's fine. All right. Let's just take a look at GMT. So it hit that resistance at 376. Okay. And now we're going to see if they're going to buy the dip or not. Are they going to buy the dip? Are they going to try? They tried to take it up here twice and they couldn't make it. So whatever happens at 376 determines the fate of GMT. Okay, let's check ApeCoin one more time. Because I'm sort of noticing that it can be beneficial to just not cover it once. All right, so here comes ApeCoin looking to retest that 1650, up 22% today. So that's higher since we covered it, right? So that's the resistance point. That's the one that's going to matter. If they take that out, it's gone. They tried to take it out up here, but they ran into sellers, okay? And then Bitcoin is, is down, but not a lot. Now let's look at altcoins in the stock market, just as a brief market update. So ARK is highly speculative stocks. Support was 5686. It held once, bounced. Now we're back again. And you got to be careful in stocks. You see up here on the watch list, S&P is up, but the speculative stocks are down 4%. Okay. Now someone's going to talk, someone has been talking about DXY and I'm definitely not ignoring you in DXY. So the dollar has gone up a lot, right? And now the dollar index is coming off. That's good. That'll help crypto. It could, it could help crypto. I mean, if the dollar index just turns around and gets slammed, that's great for crypto. Okay. What I want to know is why is it with the fed printing money, right? That the, the dollar just went up anyway. It's because everybody's afraid of something happening in Europe or Japan. Is that overdone? Maybe. Maybe. Okay. Should the dollar index be at a hundred? Is the dollar better than the yen? I don't think so. But is there a problem out there in the financial system? I mean, if there's no problem in the financial system, why are speculative equities getting hammered like this? I mean, this is like going in the opposite direction of S and P S and P has gone up, right? S and P has gone up while ARC is going down, 
right? So here's 89 minute S and P up. Here's 89 minute arc down. What's up with that? That's all I'm saying. What, what is up with that? Okay, so AIOZ. Okay, so if you look at these wicks, we've obviously we've looked I've looked at this before. Every time this goes up, there are sellers. Now buyers aren't letting it slip. But how many, how many times can we look at this before you start wondering, right? Particularly since there was a prior floor here, right? So the old floor is now the ceiling. And until that changes, right? Until they stop selling the upticks, maybe the sellers are out of ammo. That's possible. You'll know because somebody will take it through 0.216. Okay, so Freedom Cat makes a good point. He's like, I'm not selling my ETH or my BTC, but I'm thinking about consolidating my alt into BTC before May. Interesting point. I was actually watching uh, like one of my favorite, couple of my favorite YouTubers. They were sort of suggesting the same thing, right? We've talked about, we talked about Bitcoin dominance a couple times. Right. So we've mentioned that Bitcoin dominance on the four hour chart made this bottom at 41.5 and Bitcoin dominance has a legit, I mean, look, look at how hammered this has been, right? Alts have done so much better than Bitcoin for a long time, right? For a long time. Right, definitely since March, right, Bitcoin dominance has gotten hammered. This to me looks like the bigger the base, the higher in the space. So, I mean, if you're moving stuff you don't believe in into Bitcoin and ETH, right, which is liquid and hedgeable in the case of a problem or a way to preserve capital in case there is no problem, you just see if equities or you see if something happens. I mean, I know. Two, two weeks to two months is a long time in crypto. But I know that people don't want to sell. They don't want to sell, right? Like, for example, in equities, in, in the bond market. So you saw the top in the dollar index, okay? And now the top, the, the yield in the long bond is topping, okay? Okay, so that was the three percent top, right? And I said if it's if it if the long bond yield goes above three percent, everyone's going to freak out, and no one freaked out. Okay, that's good. That's good for crypto. But can you say no one freaked out with Ark getting hammered like this? <laughs> right? Somebody freaked out. It's just people aren't paying attention. So that's how I would do that. Okay. Gala, somebody's looking for an exit strategy at 23 cents. And then I got to wrap it up. Okay. So someone's asking why not dump BTC or ETH? Okay. My answer to that is. You know, you got to have a big crypto stable coin relationship that you're comfortable with, right? So if your entire net worth is in BTC or ETH, not investment advice, I don't recommend that, right? You got to have some cash based on where this is going. And I talked to somebody very smart this morning and this person said, I am all stable coins. That's probably too far in the other direction, but there has to be a crypto cash mix with, you know, 
this idea that you do not want to be in something that if there's a down move or if this failed rally was a top that you wind up down 80% in August, why would you want that? Right? If this thing all turns around to top of the dollar index, everything's fine. Well, we could get back in all the token metrics, all the token metrics, AI stuff's going to beat all the top altcoins will come to the top and we can party on. Right. So you got nothing to lose. If the market turns around and goes up, you can get back in, but you got everything to lose. If you wake up one day and whatever problem is out there, you just wake up and it's here. Right. Trouble doesn't make an appointment. Everyone thinks that they'll see the trouble and go, Oh, wow. Okay. Now we can all genuflect and get out. No trouble. Doesn't make an appointment. Okay. Gala. Okay, again, 13 top, failed rally, right? Like, badly. So, 18 cents was support. Let's look at the daily chart. Okay, so this is not a pretty candle. Now, we've seen not pretty candles before. We saw one at 26, and Gala got hurt. Okay. There's a lot of support at this 19 cents area. So, you know, I think if you like this, that there's no point in selling it into a hole, right? Because there's support at 19 cents, but you have witnessed a failed rally. So in order for this thing to go up to 23 cents, you're going to need a total reversal in the market or a coin specific catalyst. Okay, DYDX. Wow, I noticed Perp woke up the other day, right? Perp is another funny coin. These decentralized derivatives exchanges, man, they can just wake up out of nowhere. Like failed rally in the rest of the market with a pump in Perp. So DYDX is probably in a range. It is coming off support. Let's see if it's worth buying the dip. Okay. So it doesn't have the disastrous 13 top, but there's pretty good support at 478. So I'm interested to see if the old ceiling is now the floor. Let's look at perp. I don't know if DY, I've never seen DYDX have a mind of its own, but I've definitely seen perp have a mind of its own. Right. In other words, perp was going up in July of last year when everything else was going down. Unfortunately, despite my, my giddiness, right, perp goes to resistance, right, the old floor at 467 and then comes off. But I'm not seeing any type of 13 top here. I'm not seeing any negative DeMarc signals off this rally. Let's look at the four hour chart, right? So 466 is a key level in perp, right? You got the nine top, the counter trend move. It just, I don't know, perp feels like it wants to go up. It's got to take out 466. And I've seen this, right? Like perp goes down to three and it just looks destroyed. There's the 13 bottom and then it takes forever and then it goes. That's, that's just the history of perp, right? Okay, one final look at the market. Let's take a look at the 15 minute ETH chart. So ETH not doing well right this second, okay? And then just as a reminder on the way out the door, don't forget about that 13 top on the ETH monthly chart. So when I tell you guys, you know, make sure that you can sleep at night regarding your portfolio, it's because of stuff like this, right? Now, that may not kick in. That may kick in today, next month, who knows? But trouble doesn't make an appointment, okay? Um, all right, folks, I got to go, right? Uh, feel free to watch the recording, okay? Dylan says, everyone, you're missing out if you're not in eighth. So we did cover eighth, 1675, okay, is a big point there. So watch that, you know, and if eighth, somewhere there's going to be a one coin market. So let's review. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all the big altcoins 
It looks like a failed rally. If this market does not turn around and take out the high from today, April 20th, all right, you better be asking yourself, self, do I want to sit around for a big correction? The market goes back up, no big deal. We carry on, we look at token metrics or DeMarc and we find some cool altcoins, okay? But when we got a failed rally like this, you need to reorganize your portfolio, okay? That's, that would be my guidance, right? Reorganizing your portfolio means getting out of stuff you don't believe in, moving into either Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or stable coins, preferably some sort of diversified mix. And then if it's time to get back in, well, we'll do that. Or if it crashes, then you can do value investing. So that's it for today. I'm your host, Bill Noble. I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.